I couldn't hardly breathe. They just brought me in. They were extremely concerned. It came back, it, everybody was shocked. They're going like, you have over 80% blockage on both lungs in the arteries going to your heart. And it's like, how can I have that? I, they're all blood clots. When he came to our ICU, he came in with something else. He came in with a regular illness. And uh, while he was in the hospital, he was feeling lightheaded. He was feeling dizzy. In fact, he passed out. It led to finding out a big, massive clot in his lungs. For those of you who know about massive pulmonary embolism, it can be life-threatening in a very, very short period of time. When I talked to Mr. Clark, I said, we need to take care of you. And he said, look, I want to make sure that I'm able to walk my granddaughter to the aisle. And I was like, how old is she? And he said, she's four. And I was like, okay, we'll make it happen then. Each year in the United States, more than six million people are admitted to an intensive care unit, or ICU. Nurses and physicians in the ICU must be compassionate. They have to have a lot of patience. They have to be extremely calm under very tense situations and very calm with a lot of pressure. So Michael had several barriers to overcome case was fairly complex and needed treatment in, in several parts. The care provided now is more patient-centered. We focus a lot more on communication. You know, we work in close proximity with the different specialists to provide you know, the best care that we could personalize for each need. Patients get taken care of really well here. I feel like they're very communicative here. I feel like they're very intelligent here. And then on top of it, we have so many resources and I just feel like it provides a great opportunity for positive patient outcomes. The care was incredible, absolutely incredible. They were standing right there. Anything I needed, that impressed the daylights out of me. I would show up and they'd come in and they were concerned about where I was and how I felt about what was going on. And they would always reassure me. To keep our community healthy and safe and meet the demands from our growing ICU volume, our current ICU will undergo a major $5 million expansion and renovation in 2025. We are really excited for the project to expand our ICU from 21 private rooms to 30 private rooms. This will greatly enhance the nursing care and our ability to provide patient care, and it will greatly enhance the patient's experience. It's also not a matter of if, the chances are, very high that you and your loved one will end up requiring critical care. So when we are providing care for these critically ill patients, the amount of care that goes into providing that high quality care uh, comes with a significant cost, not only to the patients and the families, but to the healthcare institutes and the healthcare system overall. Orange Coast is special because we have that family environment of a small community hospital. Um, but we're still able to provide great medical care just like the bigger institutions. As a nonprofit hospital, donations are essential for our operation. In order to continue providing good outcomes to our community and our patients, we rely heavily on, on donations. I don't know if I'd have made it. I don't know if I'd have made it if this place was near here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Your generosity makes a difference in the life of every patient for whom we care. I want to thank the donors. Without it, I wouldn't be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that's really from the heart. <laughs>